Well, there's a definite nod to Corey Hart there. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so you were a fan of that song back in 84? How you? could I not be? Like everybody was a fan of that song when it came out. <laughs> and it's pow. I wear my sunglasses and I... That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Who knew you could look like Corey Hart? <laughs> That's fantastic. I know. You said that... <laughs> Thank you. But Corey Hart, I don't want to minimize this because I've read that you, you said that it was Corey Hart who convinced you that a Canadian could become a hit artist. Tell me about no, that. No, it wasn't Corey Hart. Oh. Correction. Who was it? If it wasn't Corey Hart. Well, it was Joni Mitchell who actually oh. said that to me. Joni Mitchell, Joni Mitchell, um, I ran into her at the Songwriters Hall of Fame when she was inducted um, uh, in 2007. And she said to me, you know, don't be afraid of what Canada has to offer because, you know, or, or don't be afraid of being, uh, you know, uh, an artist here starting off here because Canada will allow you for the most part more so than, than the United States would, would will allow me the, the freedom to kind of do mm. um, to be more open and, and maybe more open to you know to, to, to hearing what I have to offer because I was telling her what I wanted to do for like the ideas that I had for the for the love chronicles and she mm -hmm. was like that's amazing and you know don't be afraid to stay here and stick it out this is arguably the greatest pitfall I've ever made in my research. It's, it, it, I mixed up Corey Hart for Joni Mitchell. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, some maybe, maybe somebody I sort think, of confused. I it think or it something. was written somewhere, but yeah. I, but you know, I shouldn't believe what I read. Yeah, clearly. Not everything, but clearly. Uh, and coming from Joni, it must have been quite powerful. It was. It was I think very I remember powerful. when you performed at that song. How, did you have you ever considered relocating to the states? Um, you know, I, I'm I'm looking more at Europe than than the US. Like I, I want I want my my um, material to be released all over the world. And it, you know, Europe is is the first um, the first stop for this year. But um, but yeah, I, I'm 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 thinking Europe. I think I would my vibe You would leave Canada for Europe? Yeah. <laughs> well that's very candid. That's don't be mad. <laughs> Don't play a hate participate. No. No, honestly, That's actually, I it's wouldn't... A, it's a very interesting answer. I mean, most people would either say uh, yes or no to the States, but you kind of went the other way. You said, well, no, I'll go to I wouldn't. I would leave, like, and, and it's not that I wouldn't come back, y'all. Come on, this is where I grew up. But if, but because, like, the, the, the Europe is, is um, it's, it's really interesting, you know. Europe has a, has a really open... Uh, and open appreciation for soul music hmm. and 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 can kind of have an understand like they, they they're pretty open to like the all of the f different facets that or or uh, I don't know how to say this That's a, but all the different that. places that soul music can fall fall under because I explore a lot of different territory on this on this record you explore a lot of different territory based on memories of, of, of and influences uh, upon you yes. and uh, in particular there's a beautiful ballad, ballad on this uh, record one more chance yeah and and people have re remarked that this is the kind of song that Mariah Carey or, or Whitney Houston would sing and you have that remarkable five octave range not today. That, but, well, that very few humans have and, and you know, that Mariah Carey might have. But uh, tell me about the influences of someone like Whitney Houston. And I was thinking about Whitney Houston. And I was thinking, you know, the way we think of her now, right? Uh, do you think she gets a raw deal now? Do you think we forget about what kind of a, a musical wonder she was? Um, yeah, but I wonder if she's forgotten hmm. a little bit, too. I, I, no, I, and I'm not trying to be rude, but or or you know, but I'm I'm being to Whitney, candid who's listening. to Whitney. Yeah. You know, but yeah, <laughs> Whitney, I don't mean anything by it. Please don't come by my house. <laughs> but I, I saw her perform, although at the, at um, Clive Davis's at some dinner for Clive Day in honor of Clive Davis, mm. and she was she was like, she was more present than I'd ever that I than I've seen her in a long time, like to to perform. Um, and her vocally, she wasn't, she was more present. Like, you know, she was talking to the crowd and it was, it was very real it was, mm -hmm. and, and, and sincere. And it was great to see. And I'd love to see Whitney just come back for a second. But I think she did forget for mm -hmm. a minute, mm -hmm. you know, 
It's like... It, it, the, I mean, the pop music game, especially at that kind of level, is, is obviously a tough one. Yeah. And, and, and when I think about you, and you've been on the show before, but I didn't t- tell you this. When I saw you about five years ago, I guess, uh, in a production of Eight Misbehaving. Mm. You were incredible. I mean, you were incredible in that production. And, and uh, you were dazzling. And, and you clearly could, one would think, go the route of, say, Broadway, of musical theater. Mm-hmm. Um, you've chosen to try and carve out a, a, a pop uh, career, a, an R&B career, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and, it's, and it's going well. But would there be more stability in going into uh, the musical theater world? And tell me about making that decision. Oh, I love musical theater. Like, I, I mean, I, I started, my first professional gig was a music, musical theater gig. And um, my thing, though, is, is that uh, musical theater is, is, is great and it is, it's stable for like, you know, for as long as the production is happening, you can, you can, as long as you're doing your thing every night, it's, it's cool, you know? That steady paycheck is great. Um, but what's harder for me, the kind of creative person that I am, is to get out there and do the same thing and not have, especially if it's very regimented, mm. when it comes to um, what I what what is written, no, like the notes that are written on the pages is, is all you can sing. You have to be an interpreter. Yeah. And no, and I'm not. I'm not allowed to be an interpreter. You, well, I, I, in the sense where, as opposed to a creator, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, or like, I have to be literal. That's what it is. We don't want you to go deviate from that. And I would get in trouble when I was doing Rent. I would get in trouble every night. And Ain't Misbehaving. I get in trouble every night. The notes at the <laughs> end of the night, divine. It, what you saying was great. We love the way you changed up. Um, squeeze me, but could you please? <laughs> Stick within, yes, okay. Well, it you, you, looks like you've made, the, the, you've made a fine decision. Divine Brown, such a pleasure to have you. You're nominated for two Juno Awards. Thank By you. the way, I'm handing out single of the year. What is that? I'm handing out single of the year. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. I could just read your name no matter what's in the envelope. <laughs> Divine Brown, everybody. CBC News is next. Then more of Q live in Vancouver. Biff Naked will be here. Talk about her new album, The Promise. Plus a performance 30 minutes from now from Hot Hot Heat. I'm Gian Gameshi. Back after the news. Stick around. <laughs>